Welcome. I'm Matt Zedek with the Hopkinton Trails Club. We're an all-volunteer organization here in the town of Hopkinton. We've been around for about 10 years now. Our primary mission is to get out and enjoy the beautiful trails in the town of Hopkinton and help promote them so that others know about the wonderful resources we have locally. Another part of our mission is to help create new trails wherever appropriate. And lastly, to try to link all these trails together, both here in town and with other trails in the nearby area. Our trails club is open to everyone. We're very user friendly. We have monthly meetings. Uh, and a big part of what we do is we have monthly hikes that, again, are open to everybody from small to uh, as, as old as we can get them. Uh, we also help other uh, organizations in the town with outdoor activities and, again, help try to cre uh, create as many trails as possible. Uh, please, the best way to find out information about the Trails Club, we have a great website. It's at uh, hopkintontrailsclub.com, and it's updated all the time. You can find out about our monthly hikes there. Um, I'm going to point out here briefly, this is our little Trails Club button that you may see folks wear around town. And I'm pointing it out because on there we have four of the different uses that we see on, uh, amongst other uses on the trails, but some of the more common ones. There's a picture of some folks hiking on the trails. There's a picture of a bicycle because we have folks biking on trails. We have a horseback rider and one of my favorites, cross-country skiing on the beautiful trails. Tonight, we're very, very fortunate to have a great uh, special guest come and speak about some of her efforts at helping to promote the walking aspect of uh, using our beautiful trails. Um, uh, Marjorie visited our last monthly meeting of the Trails Club, and we were very pleased to hear about some of the books that she's been working on to help promote the beautiful resources we have in our area. Um, uh, after we hear Marjorie give her a presentation. We have some information on the back table and some of her books will be for sale. We'll also have some questions and answers. Uh, hopefully we'll have some good time for some questions and answers. So lastly again, please we encourage folks to get out and about and enjoy the beautiful town of Hopkinton and the surrounding area. And please join me in welcoming Marjorie Turner Holman. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, and thank you very much for making the time to come and join me. I really love to share pictures from the trail. I really enjoy even more getting out and walking with people, so this is wonderful to learn about your club, learn about the things you're doing, and I'm really excited to be able to show you just some of the, the, some of the trails in Hopkinton, and I try to do sort of growing concentric circles around your community of other towns that you might not be aware of, some of the trails that are in those towns. But I always try to start with the town where I am. And tonight, that's Hopkinton. And Hopkinton has some wonderful, wonderful resources. And I bet a lot of you will recognize this is the spillway at Hopkinton State Park. I visited last fall. You can see the fall colors there. And it was very, very dry, but very, really intriguing structure, uh, the stonework there, that I think when the water's there, you may not be able to see as much what a, real, what a work of art it was um, in Ashland State Park has a very similar spillway. And I was, I don't know the history of it, but I'm curious as to whether the same person designed both dam and spillway arrangements. But I was really tickled to have to have been, been in Ashland to come to Hopkinton and find this um, same design and actually much bigger in Hopkinton. Very nice. Um, and it was also very dry. Over in your beach area, there was nary a drop of water in the swimming area, but some stunning, stunning foliage. And I couldn't pass up getting some pictures of those blazing, blazing trees last fall. It was really exciting. Um, it was very quiet. But nobody was there swimming, for sure. But it, it was a, a beautiful day to be over enjoying uh, Hopkinton State Park. And just as a reminder to people when I show, show these pictures to people that um, the boat rental is in this area where behind the dam where the water is deeper. And um, it's a real resource. I've, I've paddled uh, kayaks at Hopkinton State Park right from there. If you don't know, um, if you want to kayak, it's a wonderful place to try it out. And I think you, there's also sailing, that you can rent sailboats there. 
So um, a lovely place, but Hopkinton State Park also has some really nice walking trails. I tried the Heart Healthy Trail and um, I hadn't been on one before and it was kind of a revelation to discover that heart healthy does not mean all flat, that they want to get your heart going. So there were some ups and downs, which is all right. It actually was basically an easy, an easy trail. Um, a little bit of challenge for me in a couple places, ups and downs. But um, I use walking sticks. Uh, not everybody does, but um, for me, I have some paralysis that makes it so that it's a good thing. And a lot of people feel like they can't get out on walking trails if they have any kind of, any, any kind of compromise. And I would like to encourage people that yes, you can. And there are ways, there's all sorts of resources of ways that you can get out and enjoy the outdoors. And there are also a lot of what I call handicapped friendly trails. And um, I'm doing what I can to help encourage people in that too. That there are many, many trails and it, it isn't always the Appalachian Mountain Club type of let's go scale a mountain. There's a lot of places right in our area that we have easy walks. The Berkshires has the mountains, the Cape has the ocean, but Metro West, South Central Massachusetts, we have easy walks. Mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty cool. So uh, this is a little peek at your center, center trail. And I understand that it is still under development, but um, it's a nice um, flat, hard crushed stone and um, no, I get people asking about ticks. People worry about, well, where can I walk that I don't, I don't want to encounter ticks. A trail like this is one of those places that you're not going to really encounter. You're in the outdoors, so there's always ticks, but um, it's a dry place, not a lot of brush, things for you to run into, and you're much less likely to encounter ticks. It's still a good idea to have a good a tick check at the end of the day if you've been out in the outdoors, but I would just encourage people not to let that keep you from being outside and enjoying the wonderful places that we have. Uh, this looks like Lake Whitehall. <laughs> and um, another place that has a nice, easy walking trail. Um, it's primarily for boats, and I don't encourage walkers to head over there in the summer. I think it's a pretty zooey place from what I've heard with lots and lots of boaters, uh, motor boaters, and um, noisier than I would probably want in the summer. So I, I encourage people that are looking for a nice hike with Lake at Lake Whitehall to go in the off season. There's pl there was nary a person to be seen when I was there in, I think it was November. Nobody, just nobody. And we had the trail all to ourselves. We had the parking lot all to ourselves. And there is a place for non-boat car parking to be parked, but it's, it's very limited. It's off to the, um, if you're looking at the boat ramp, it's off to your left just beyond the boat ramp. It's kind of a one-way circle they ask people to drive in. And, um, but it, it was lovely, lovely water views all along the, the trail on the north side of the trail. The south side is a lot steeper and there's some private property issues. So I don't encourage people to go on that side, but the north side was really quite nice. Wasika is another property that's in Hopkinton. It's a, um, it's a Mass Audubon property. It does not have a visitor center, so I think people don't know it as much. It's, they're not as aware of it. Probably, uh, I'm guessing most people in this room might know it, but a lot of people are not aware of it. I actually had a hard time finding it at first. Um, I had to really follow from 135 on Clinton Street, you really have to look at your odometer and keep going because it feels like it should be here and it should be here. And, and finally, right at two miles, there it is. And there is a nice sign and very easy walking trails. It, it, it has some very small loops. You cannot do a loop all the way around the pond anymore. And that's thanks to Mr. Beaver. And he's actually very, very busy. And when we were there very recently, just in the last couple weeks, I saw fresh wood chips. 
and they were, uh, that beaver was busy. And it's an impressive dam that's over on um, the far side from this picture. Um, he, it's, oh, I don't know, at least that high from the, wa the water level. It's, it's a, he's working hard to keep that dam up for Chicken Brook is what, what flows through there, which eventually gets to the Charles River. So, but it's a quiet place. Um, we were, when I visited this spring, there was an osprey tending a nest. So that was pretty cool. And out, out where we had to really use binoculars to see it, but it was clearly there. And, and that was exciting to see an, an osprey working actively on its nest. So, uh, College Rock is yet another lovely, lovely, easy walk right near um, the Milford town line, right off of 85 on College Street. And you can truly circumnavigate College Rock, and there's a little bit of wetness over by the um, stream that's, that goes behind it. Um, I'm not a rock climber, so I've never climbed College Rock. I hear that people enjoy that, but from what I could tell, if you wanted, there's also a, a long slope up to the top of College Rock, um, I would just encourage people that have children to be careful and to know that there's big drop off there. Um, what's really ni nice about College Rock also is it is adjacent to a total of about a thousand acres that is abutting in Milford and Holliston and College Rock is one of the better parking places to access that property. It's abutted by 495 and Route 16 and 85. It's a huge green space. Um, it also includes part of the Vietnam. The Nemba bike trail is, is within that property. The Adams Street Conservation property is there. I think, I, yeah, this is the trail from the parking at Adams Street. And um, it's just an amazing property that I had never heard of until very recently. And, and as I was looking for ma at maps, as I was putting together the second more easy walks, I came across this big green space and I started asking around and realized there was this huge hiking area that I had never been aware of. So um, still lots more that I have to explore there. I haven't had a chance to explore very much. But it's worth the trip. College Rock is one of the better accesses for it. Adams Street has about 10 or 15 places. And the third, proper, the third parking is actually the Route 85 Upper Charles Trail in Milford. That abuts the property as well. And that's a, a large parking lot. But trails um, go into the Adams Street um, conservation area from there as well. You're looking at the mighty Charles here, which we all know knows and starts in Hopkinton at Echo Lake. And what you're looking at is a trail that you can see from the upper Charles Trail just south of Echo Lake. After you get into Milford, it's a little tiny, little teeny stream. And I'll be showing you some other views of the Charles River from some other trails, because often it's called the hidden Charles, that access to the Charles is up in our area is somewhat limited. But I have some nice trails that you can get to and enjoy the river um, and have some nice walks alongside it as well. So this is the Upper Charles Trail um, accessed basically from, from Dilla Street. And this is the Lu Louisa Lake. Um, Dilla Street is right off of 85 in Milford. And um, Dilla Street is great parking, easy parking there. And that's where, if you were interested in seeing that little tiny trail of the Upper Charles um, that I just showed you, that's, that's probably the easiest way to access it. And um, the missing link is another part of the Upper Charles Trail just, just finished last October. Very, very exciting because up until they completed that trail, there was a portion in Milford and there was a portion in Holliston and never the twain should meet. Um, now they've finished this link and it's easy access from the back of Hannaford's grocery store or Friendly's, uh, so Friendly's restaurant right on 109. Um, just a mile long, but what I really like about it is it's just about 
a block from Route 16 in downtown Milford, and many of us know how noisy and congested downtown Milford is, and you're a block away and you wouldn't know it. It's quiet. You're in the woods. You've got some stone walls that come through. It's just lovely. Uh, and and it's, a whole, it's a paved trail. So you can start at the Hopkinton line, come down through Milford to Fino Field. You're gonna have to cross Route 16 and walk a block on the sidewalk to where the missing link starts and then come on this mile of trail, curl around to where Friendly's is, cross back 109, and you're headed back up towards Holliston. And when, once you get to Holliston, you're gonna see things like the Phipps Tunnel, which is a very, very cool railroad tunnel that um, is now part of the trail. The trail goes right through it. Um, and it's, it actually, Highland Street in um, Holliston becomes Winthrop Street in Medway. It goes, it goes right through, right over the Phipps Tunnel. Uh, one, an event I would encourage people to think about attending is the, lan the, I think it's called the Lantern Walk on New Year's Eve. And I went last, last New Year's Eve. They string the Phipps Tunnel with lights and they have grills and they cook hot dogs and they have people that have bonfires that host the bonfires and one very, very nice family had marshmallows and s'mores and I had to stop and toast a marshmallow. It was just, <laughs> I couldn't help it. Uh, and because it's white crushed stone in the Holliston section, it was a full moon. It was, it was New Year's Eve and it was freezing and you could see because the full moon lit up the trail and people were pulling children along in wagons and were greeting neighbors. It was just one of the, the nicest ways that I could think of spending New Year's Eve. So it's on my calendar for New Year's Eve for this year and I'd encourage you all to think about that for you as well. Uh, and then I'd just like to give people a view of, this is right in downtown Holliston and this is where right now the trail ends but there are plans, as you and Hopkinton know, to make a whole loop um, into Ashland, at Sherburn and Ashland and back into Hopkinton. But um, there's basically you have to use uh, the municipal lot or there's a little bit of parking right next to the trail, but you need to be careful about where you park. Um, it's still, they're still working on developing uh, parking. Part of the, the challenge of finishing this section was that they didn't all own, um, the Holliston Trail Group didn't own all of the rights. And just this past year, they voted a substantial amount of money that is, has enabled them to claim the rights to those pieces of property. They're no longer leasing it for the trail. So now they can get grants to finish the trail work and there's, they're already doing a lot of the work when I was, was on the trail very recently. They're smoothing out more of it and um, getting it so that it's, it's gonna be a wonderful, wonderful resource. Right over into Ashland, this is Warren Woods, and this is another fairly new property. Uh, you would think this is New England. There aren't, you know, we're losing property, but in fact, Open space, um, I'm seeing as, as people are valuing it more and so are making efforts to reclaim things. And this was a new acquisition, I'm, I'm not sure the date, but in just the last couple years. Um, it's right across from the Warren Conference Center on um, Chestnut Street in Ashland. A lot of stone walls through it, uh, several loop trails. There's a nice orchard couple of orchards, actually, that you come across making you realize that it was once a farm. And um, some open areas that I saw people, I saw cross-country skiing marks. Um, so it's just a simple, you know, it's not anything that's terribly challenging. It's got some little streams coming through that are lovely. Um, but when you want something a little different, it's a place to think about trying, and it's very, very easy parking right off of Chestnut Street. 
Just a little north of the center of Ashland is the Ashland Town Forest. And what I noticed when I visited the Ashland Town Forest uh, was that it was one of the trails that I was able to just keep walking steadily for practically the whole trip. It was one of the most enjoyable for just the sheer pleasure of walking. There were streams through like this. And there um, was this little bridge over this stream. Um, there's a, there's a, um, ah, when you, when you cut stone, it, um, I'm blanking out on what to, where, where, uh, where you cut out gra um, granite. Quarry. Thank you. Thank you, a quarry that you can see right from the trail and just kind of look at, that it, it, it was just cool. You didn't have to go traipsing through the woods and go bushwhacking to see the quarry. It's right accessible right there. Um, many, many loop trails. I would highly recommend taking, printing out a map for the Ashland Town Forest. It is very easy to go a lot farther than you had intended. <laughs> I was very grateful for the map that I had, and I still went a little farther than I intended, and it was very, very nice. Um, what is an, another nice thing about the Ashland Town Forest is that it is connected to a piece of property that is owned by the Sudbury Valley trustees called Kawasuck Woods. And it is right on Salem End Road in Framingham. And what I understand, and people can tell me if I'm wrong, is the story is that Salem End Road was settled by um, people who were fleeing the Salem witch trials and came and resettled in this area on that. And you can definitely tell that it's been farmed. Lots of stone walls, big what they call wolf trees in the middle of the woods, where at one time that was the only tree growing. And you can tell when you're, when you're walking through the woods, if you say, uh, see a really huge oversized one tree, you can probably guess that that was an open field with maybe one tree, and that tree had plenty of sunlight. And now, since um, farming is not nearly as prevalent, in New England, the woods have mostly reclaimed their own. Um, at one time, I think I saw that in the 1860s, about 90% of New England was open, non-wooded. And that's completely reversed and, and is really most all of those farm, all those farmers went to Ohio <laughs> when the railroads opened up. <laughs> But um, that's when you see these stone walls, understand whenever you see a stone wall, that was a farm field. And whenever, whenever I walk through these woods, I think of those poor, poor farmers, especially when I'm getting chewed up by mosquitoes. And I think, I don't know what they did for mosquito repellent, but that was really hard work. Uh, and, and really, it was considered skilled labor to, do, to lay stone walls, and in fact, paid a lot better than regular farm work, but it's a lot of work to haul rocks around and make those walls. This is over also in, Fram in Framingham Call Callahan um, State, State Park. And Callahan State Park is a really popular place for dog walkers, mostly the very f open field. Once I got off onto the trails, I saw very few dog walkers. I saw signs of horses that were on the trails, but very few dog walkers once I was away. But it was like I had gone to a dog training class. <laughs> In fact, we thought that was what was happening when we visited. There were these, all, everybody knew each other. They come regularly. And they all, they even have a pond at Callahan State Park that is just for dogs. People are not supposed to swim there, but the dogs are allowed to swim. It's a little tiny thing, but, um, and there's a dike there that um, I, I, people said you could get a view. I'm not sure what you're going to get a view of. It's, it's just a little bit raised. And um, I'm going to be showing you some other places that you can get views, because that's one of the things we, we do have to kind of work hard for in this area. There are not a lot of views, but I do have some places that you can get some really wonderful views and that aren't terribly difficult to get to. 
And this is what the trails at Callahan State Park look like. They're, they're just easy, relatively level, clear, not too hard to follow, um, fairly well marked, not tremendously well marked, but fairly well marked. And it's a good thing to print out one of their trail maps from the DCR website. This is Mill Pond. Isn't that a wonderful picture? I was so appreciative of those, those uh, geese taking off right when I was there and that I, my camera worked and caught it. But um, this is Mill Pond in Westboro. And um, this has a really lovely trail on the north side of the pond there. Easy walking, water views, signs of beaver. Um, it also, I think I've got another picture here, a boat ramp, and it's, it's shallow enough that you don't want to do big motorboats and water skiing, so it's very quiet. Um, you want to do kayaking and canoeing there. And when I've, in any time I've visited, there have been people using the boat ramp and getting out there. There's birds, there's, um, it's, it's a nice, good sized place and it actually my understanding is that it's it contains headwaters that head out into the Sudbury, Assabet and Concord River that it all starts heading out from that direction um, but it's on, right on Mill Road and um, Mill Pond and Westbury right off of Route 30 just west of um, Westboro Center this is another tiny little trail in uh, property in Westboro called the Walk-Up Reservation. Sudbury Valley trustees own it. It is so almost completely surrounded by office parks. And for their presence, you would think it's noisy, and I think it must be all office people <laughs> typing on their typewriters and not making a lot of noise on their computers. Um, it was incredibly quiet surprisingly quiet and it's a little ways off from Route 9 so even that it, there's some buff, some buffer there about 63 acres but what you're looking at is a trolley line went through that area and that's why it's so completely straight and it's a teeny tiny bit of a, what you would call a rail trail now but it's just this little tiny property and then the pro, the res, the business park have have uh, they've cut off anywhere to be able to trace where the rest of the trolley line was. But um, the walk-up reservation, a wonderful, wonderful gift to the community and easy parking there and very easy access from, um, from Route 9. And this is the, um, also in Westboro, I figured I'd stay in Westboro for another minute, and this is the Bowman Conservation Area, Sandra Sandra Pond, it's a, um, Sandra Pond, it's a reservoir. And again, the water was very low last fall, but uh, we were mostly able to get all the way around. It was difficult to get all the way around. I would recommend that people go on the north side, or there's also an approach from Bowman Street itself. I started at the Minuteman Park, which is right outside Westboro Center on I believe it's Upton Road, and uh, walked around to the north side from there, and then from the Bowman Street parking, you can go straight out to the reservoir and get water views. But there's actually, it's actually got some pretty steep places. In one place, the stairway, I have a picture of the stairs, are kind of like that, and I had a hard time getting up the stairs. They weren't, they weren't standard stair step height. And for me, it was kind of challenging. And some people would find them fine, but I would just encourage people to um, judge what you're, what you're up to. It's not something to avoid, but just something to be mindful. And when I point people to easy walks, I like to warn them that there's, these are things that you want to consider because everybody has to make it their own judgment of how capable you are um, but there's many things in between handicapped accessible and the Appalachian Mountain Club, um, Pinkham Notch. There's, there's much, a lot in between.
This is a view of um, the Charles River. We're getting back to the Charles again, taken from Rocky Narrows in Sherburne. And I went to Rocky Narrows one day, and I went early in the morning, and I took a whole lot of pictures of fog. And that was really, really disappointing. I went back three times to get this picture. <laughs> and it, I finally got a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. Um, there's, this is from the King Philip Overlook. There are actually two big overlooks at Rocky Narrows, which is a trustees of the reservation property, just off 27, right outside in Medfield Center, just a couple miles north of Medfield Center, just a little south of Sherburn Center. Um, I was determined to see both out, um, overlooks, and I'm not sure if I have a picture of the other one, but I found that the other Rocky Narrows overlook has nearly become obscured, and it also was one of the harder approaches to an overlook than I have ever done in my life, and I'm not going to do it again. So if you feel like having a challenge in some nice, steep, rooty and rocky with a really steep drop off, please be my guest mm -hmm. to go over to the, to the Rocky Narrows Overlook and I will content myself to take a nice, easy walk through a portion of what is actually the Sherburn Town Forest. It's all adjacent to Rocky Narrows and then approach um, the King Philip Overlook. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous overview and it's not hard to get there at all. It's really quite an easy walk. Not even any scrambling required. What I also like to uh, point out to people, this is an easement that is accessed from Rocky Narrows and it's one of the nicest walks along the Charles River, the getting down where the river is bigger um, that I have found. It's about a two mile, maybe, an, maybe a mile, um, easement that goes from Rocky Narrows all the way, stops at a road. You're basically walking through some very rich people's front yards and their view, but it's an easement. And as long as you stay on the easement and don't go running around in their yard, nobody gets hurt. So it's really a lovely place to walk very flat. It's, it's really a clear track. So it's not terribly buggy, it's not terribly um, brushy, it's an easy track to follow um, and well worth the trip just to have a walk along the Charles River. I, I just, I love it, I've, I've gone on that walk several times. Uh, now we get into some other trustees the prop of the reservation property. This is another day that it wasn't a great view, so I don't have the best view, and this is Noon Hill but it does have a nice overlook, and when it's a sunny day that I can get there, I will get a better picture. But uh, Noon Hill has a, a really nice trail um, with a nice overlook. It's got a number of multiple trails, and it's also got a, a circumnavigate the pond that is very near where the parking is. Um, it's also got an extra property right across the street from it called the Shattuck Reservation and the Bay Circuit Trail goes through the Shattuck Reservation. I'm not sure if it goes through Noon Hill as well, but it, uh, the Bay Circuit Trail starts in uh, the North Shore, travels around Boston, comes right through this, the area, Ashland, Sherburn, Medfield, Walpole, Sharon, um, Foxborough direction to head down to the South Shore. This is another Trustees of the Reservation in Medfield, and that's, um, this is Rocky Woods. Lots and lots of people know about Rocky Woods, but I don't know that everyone under knows that Rocky Woods has a lovely overlook. This is Cedar Hill. It's a bit of a walk. Um, it's got water bars, so it's you know a little bit of a climb to get there, but it is a lovely view. As you can tell, it was another foggy day. <laughs> and, and I don't always have luck with that. It means I'll just have to go back. So we do the best we can with what we got. This is a, this is a view that's worth getting to. This is from uh, Trustees of the Reservation just over the line from Medfield, from Rocky Woods, into Dover, Noanette Woodlands. And yes, those are the buildings of Boston that you can see from Dover. Uh, it's a clear shot 
and a nice, nice view. There is a better approach, um, one direction than the other. It, you, rock, um, trustees have really, really good uh, trail maps, and you do well to pay attention to the contour lines because that gives you some, some idea. And to the, um, boy, I, I came around from, the le from this way and approached it and then went down the other, to the right, and I was sorry I went down to the right. It was really very steep. I would have gone back, I would next time would go back the way I came, and uh, we just were still exploring. But it was pretty eroded uh, where it was so steep and difficult to get through. Um, right, right, not far from Dover now, right over the line from 109, down on Fisher North Street is um, Adams Farm in Walpole. Um, people in the Walpole area know about the Norfolk Aggie School, and that's Fisher Street, North Street, and I'm never quite sure where the street changes names, but it, it's about midway on that, on that street. Um, total of 700 acres of property, 300 of Adams Farm, they have a community garden there, they have dirt bike races there, um, mountain bike, mountain bike, not dirt bike. Um, and uh, some nice um, carriage roads. It's really lovely. Um, it's, again, a rather new addition to open space. It's, it's really in the last, I believe, five years or so. Who would think that we're still adding properties like this? So it's 300 acres of Adams Farm and then an additional 400 acres of conservation land that are adjacent making a, a large contiguous property and the Bay Circuit Trail goes through Adams Farm way over on the edge. I haven't gotten there, but the maps say it's there. Another part of Walpole, another really nice little trail in Walpole is their town forest property. Uh, that you're looking at the Neponset River there and it's right outside Walpole Center, take Common Street to South Street and there's uh, probably 14 car parking, a lovely bridge right over the Neponset almost immediately, and then a very broad, probably 10 to 15 foot wide, it's really a fire road, but I, there are people biking, there are people walking, there are ba people pushing baby strollers, um, lots of dog walkers. There are some additional trails on the far side of Washington Street from there, but I walked the half mile down to Washington Street and back, which made a nice, easy walk. Bird Park is another trustee's, the reservation property. Yes, that's my little grand girl there, being the mermaid at the pond. Um, what I love about this is um, the Walpole used to have a town swimming pool here, and this was a part, this feeds into the Neponset, but it was a dammed stream that had cement walls around both sides of it, and that was where everybody took their swimming lessons. The walls have been removed here in Walpole, and uh, there's cement walkways, there's packed down walkways. It's really pretty handicapped friendly at this point. Big open fields for frisbee games and other such, tennis courts, playground, um, lots of community events that they have going on. The trustees took this over, I'm not sure exactly how long ago recently, and um, it had fallen, Bird Park had fallen on hard times, and it had some difficult things like a murder, and um, really dissuaded people from being there. Trustees of the reservation have turned it around tremendously, and I'm, I'm really pleased to see that. It's a great place to bring grandkids or anybody else you enjoy being with. Uh, this is another, uh, yet another trustee's the reservation in Sharon, and this is Moose Hill Farm. And um, this has about a two mile loop that goes through the property, very, very easy to travel. Uh, uh, some limited view of Boston, you have to really work to get your view from Moose Hill Farm. But um, a lot of wildlife, We I, saw turkeys hanging out underneath the apple tree that was there, including the tom turkey. Um, 
I just, I just love the ferns that are through the woods here. On the far side of the power lines where the um, trail circles through, um, you'll find some old house foundations and then stone walls going on either side of the path. And when you see stone walls on either side of a trail, you know that that was probably a, a historical cart path, that that was a road at one point taking people from one place to another, and now you're in the middle of the woods. It's hard to imagine how important a road like that would have been, but people worked enough to put stone walls, which are hard work, on both sides and smoothed it out. A lot of work, and thats it's just one more clue of when you're walking in the woods, such very cool things that are there that don't have signs, but if you know what to look for, there's a, there's a story there. And this is a quarter mile just down the road from Moose Hill Farm is Moose Hill Audubon. Moose Hill Audubon was the very first of the Mass Audubon properties. Um, I believe it's, I think it's 2,000 acres, it's huge. It's really, really huge. And it has a lovely look, uh, a view overlook looking west over towards the football stadium, if, if that's your interest. It's not my interest, but if you wanna see it, you can, <laughs> you can see it. Um, it's a little bit of a strenuous walk, but I will work to get a view. And it was, it was doable. It wasn't like I had to scale mountains or anything, it was just a little bit of a longer walk than I sometimes take. And um, a nice, nice view, very rocky out, outcropping, uh, very, very cool, just the rocks, and you see the, the effect of the wind, the trees that are, are so stunted and blown and in, in growing in one direction because of the prevailing winds. A really nice spot. They have lots and lots of activities there. Um, it's worth, worth the trip. Another Mass Audubon property in Norfolk is Stony Brook. Many, many people know Stony Brook. And uh, it's a very small place, and it's got a little loop trail uh, with a boardwalk. But right here, I, I like to highlight this because this is a, uh, um, I don't even know exactly the term, but it was built with the consultation of people with special needs. And before they built it, they talked to people and they actually won an award from Perkins School for the Blind because this was designed for people who are, have limited sight. And um, the people from Mass Audubon said, well, what did we do? You know, we, we, what, it, what was it that made us win this award? And they said, you talked to us before you built your trail. There's a lesson for all of us in that. If you wanna build something for somebody, talk to them and ask them what they want and they might surprise you. So this, I, I just really like that as a, here's something that was not only useful for a lot of people, but thoughtfully created and thoughtfully used. Um, it also, these are the views you get when you're out on the boardwalk. You see, you see water snakes, you see turtles, you see birds, you see ducks, you see geese. It's just a lovely, lovely small spot a lot packed into a very small area and very handicapped and stroller friendly. It's all on slopes. It's not ADA accessible standards of 5% five, five degree grade, but it's friendly. It's all slopes. So if you're a mom with a stroller or a grandmom with a stroller, you can get your kids there. Frank, over into Franklin, um, this is yet another property that has only been given to the town in the last number of years, Delcart uh, Conservation Property, right outside Franklin Center on Pleasant Street headed towards Norfolk. And I, I'm not sure of the acreage, but it's a nice loop all the way around the pond. And I'm showing you the bridge because it's a floating bridge. And that made it so you don't have to go up and walk along the commuter rail line, which is not a great thing to have people walking on. And so this made it so you actually can do a loop all the way around the pond. And it's very fun to take children or just take yourself on the floating bridge. Uh, it's, it's a hoot. It, it's just probably there are other places around that have them, but I don't know where they are. Um, Delcart, it's, it's a really nice, 
gift to the community. Ernie Delcart owned this property and wouldn't let anybody fish there for years. Um, he lived right there, and and somebody said, "Well, you know, what what should I what would I pay, what would it cost for me to fish there?" And, and Ernie looked at him and said, "You don't have that kind of money." <laughs> and um, now the whole community has it, but it is still catch and release only. So the the fish are still safe at Delcart Conservation Area. Uh, lovely, nice place for kayaking. Nice boat put in. Um, easy, nice ramp, uh, nice quiet, and it's small. It's not going to be motorboats, um, electric. It, it just would be small, not gas motors. So quiet, um, really nice. This is the Sculpture Park in Franklin. And this is another brand new property that was built after I wrote the book that has Franklin in it, so I'll have to update my book. And this was the site of the Franklin Town Pond. And um, this was another stream that feeds eventually into the Charles. And it had cement walls on both sides. What you're looking at just where behind the, the strange sculpture was one of the walls of the pond. They left that there and built a completely handicapped, ADA accessible 10 minute loop through the woodland. And it's an outdoor sculpture, a place to display outdoor sculptures that are large, that it's not always easy to find places to display them. So uh, this is right behind the police station because people said, well, are you going to worry about vandalism? And they said, probably not. <laughs> and it's been fine from everything I know. But it, it's, the plan is to have rotating sculptures so that it's a venue that area artists have to be able to share their art in a, in a very public place. Now we get finally to Bellingham, which is where I live. And this is probably my favorite trail um, in Bellingham. You're getting another view of the Charles, which has gotten a whole lot bigger since it left Hopkinton. And um, this is accessed from an athletic field. Lots of towns have taken open space and used a lot of their open space for athletic fields, but I think the trails might have been there first. I'm not really sure, or else the dirt bikes have made trails. But regardless, the trails are there. It's an easy half mile walk down to the Charles River, and I feel like I'm just in this quiet, tiny, just hidden place that is really lovely. In fact, just behind me, there's some people's backyard. But they're way away, and you can't get to this spot except through walking the trail from the high street field or walking down the railroad track that goes on the other side of the river. It is really a relatively inaccessible place, except for the trail at high street. Yes, bring your bug spray in the summer. But it's just a, a lovely, lovely spot. And I, I like to share that with people as a make the trip. It's worth it. Get back up to Medway and Choate Park. And this is the view from the Thayer House, which has just been refurbished. It's a wonderful, wonderful meeting place with their, their historical society, I believe, worked on that. And it's now open to the public and open for hire. Um, so that's the view of Choate Park. There's a trail that walks, goes around most of it. And then there's a little half mile trail at the back of it that goes through the woods all the way over to Medway High School that's off of 126. Um, and it's just a trail through the woods with stone walls. It's one more stone wall trail that we are so blessed with in New England. Because you understand, I grew up in Florida. There was not even rocks much. We had sand, and when I dug in my backyard, I would hit water at two feet. So all of this is just wonderful, and I, I came up here for college, and I've never, never gotten tired of it. It is just beautiful. Here's a little n number, another view of, your, of the Charles in Medway, and for this, you need to stop by your local Medway police station on Village Street and park at the police station and then poke around because there's a trail, but it's never obvious right on Village Street, and it's only about 20 yards right to the Charles River, and you've got a bench, you've got a nice spot 
to sit and enjoy the view of the river. It's not, there's not that many places that you have like that along the Upper Charles and behind the police station and Medway is one of them. We move on over to Millis and this is another view of the Charles. This is another trustees of the reservation. This is called Cedar River and it's a loop trail. Bring your bug spray. I've seen, I've seen beaver or muskrat. I wasn't sure what in the water. Um, there's a canoe put in at one point. It's a lovely, lovely loop trail, but like I said, make sure and bring your bug spray. So, uh, also in Millis, uh, there are a lot of farms don't welcome people coming to their, to their farm and walking on, through their fields. Um, Tangerini Farm in Millis actually welcomes people. They have an ice cream stand so you can go for ice cream. But they also have trails that go through their fields and then their property is adjacent to some additional conservation land called Pleasant Meadow in Millis. And when I talked to the owner, Laura Tangerini, um, she said, yeah, we used to put up markers on the trail and the tractors kept running over them. <laughs> so there's no markers. Um, you might want to ask them to point you which direction to go, but it's, it's, not, it's not such a big place that you're going to easily get lost. It was, a, it was a lovely spot to take a wonderful walk in the summer and get some ice cream as well. Uh, I don't, do any of you know about Hopedale Parklands? Are you familiar with Hopedale Parklands? Have any of you ever been to the, um, Milford Hospital? Yes, you've been a half a mile from, Milford, from Hopedale Parklands. Um, another, another kayak rental place, the town of Hopedale rents their kayaks there, but um, Hopedale Parklands was constructed 100 years ago um, and they built a carriage road all the way around Hopedale Pond and landscaped it to make it look natural. And it does look natural, like this is the way it grew, and it didn't. It was just a little scummy mill pond, and they made it into a lovely, lovely spot with a carriage road and um, some free toys that are there for your enjoyment. And that's my granddaughter and her friends made a makeshift slide from the rocks. And you see how wide the carriage road is. It really is quite workable, bikeable. Um, it's not paved, but it is hard packed. And um, about two miles around, it's not a complete loop. At one point you do have to get out on the road if you wanted to make a loop or you could come back. West Hill Dam is another place that's worth the trip. And the Army Corps of Engineers plow their parking lot. So when you're feeling cooped up in the winter and don't feel like you've got a place that you can go because everything's snowed in, the Army Corps of Engineers plow. It's wonderful. The dam is a trail. There's a trail at the end of the dam into the woods. There's a swimming area. There's open fields. So a lot of different terrain right there in that one spot. Just down the road from West Hill Dam in Uxbridge is a Riverbend Farm, handicapped friendly. Their visitor center is handicapped accessible. The bathroom is handicapped accessible. The bridge over to the towpath is no step, is, is handicapped friendly. And the towpath is hard packed. It's narrow, but it is workable. And it's about a mile towpath that they've refurbished and there's a whole lot of stories I could tell you and I'm running out of time so I'm not going to tell you a lot about the Blackstone River um, Canal but it was started building in, 18, in the 1820s. They were inspired by the success of the Erie Canal and started working. It took them 20 years. Um, if any of you have Irish immigrants in your ancestry it's very possible that they helped dig these canals. It was a tremendous effort from Worcester down to Pawtucket. And it was finished in the 1840s. And two years after it was complete and operating and doing well, the railroads opened up into Ohio and it went bankrupt and was abandoned for almost 200 years. And about 30 years ago, Congress saw fit to approve the National Heri Blackstone Valley National Heritage Corridor. And they started reclaiming it. And we are the beneficiaries 
it, uh, your tax dollars and mine. I'm, for one, am very, very grateful. Uh, just up the river from uh, River Bend Farm on the east side of the Blackstone, this is Lookout Rock, right over the line into Northbridge, and you're looking down the Blackstone Valley there. It's just lovely. You can either walk the mile from Hartford Avenue along the river and get to Lookout Rock and do a lot of scrambling, or you can drive around and park in a nice little parking lot and go a quarter mile. And the last part, you do have to kind of crab walk up the rock to actually get your view. But I will crab walk. I am not proud when it comes to getting a view. And it is really quite a lovely view. Over in Upton, you've got the CCC camp. And I was just there today and had a nice, nice walk. This is the only CCC, it, um, it, I think it was the headquarters in the, in the state of Massachusetts that is still existing. They were all over the country. This was thousands of men were put to work. And again, we are the beneficiaries all these years later from the 1930s up to 1941. Um, and these, these were men working in the woods, supporting their family by doing hard labor, and they made wonderful paths, um, carriage roads of sorts, fire roads, really, through the woods and um, multiple, multiple trails. Good thing to take a, um, a map with you there. And that's something of what the trails look like. Uh, some of them are steeper, but a lot of them you can walk two abreast very easily. Uh, over into Grafton, Silver Lake. Many of you may have driven right by this. This is Silver Lake and Grafton. I live at Silver Lake in Bellingham, but there are lots of Silver Lakes. And many of you have seen this waterfall. It's their town beach, but there are also some lovely trails. And I loved, I really loved it when I visited, but I did question the intelligence of the beavers <laughs> in Grafton that would build a house that would then start chewing through the tree that was directly giving them shade and was going to fall down. My last slide is a view from Nuckup Hill, Sweat Hill in Rentham. <coughs> if you look just to the little side, which you can't because it's a picture, you would see the, pic the buildings of downtown Boston. And it's just gorgeous. From down That's downtown Rentham where the spire is. You're looking a long ways. And that was their town um, skiing hill. And so we're just about out of time. But I'm going to take questions. But for now, our presentation is over. Thank you very much.